I applied to the Fulbright program because it's one of the only programs in the U.S. that allows true cultural exchange. Sitting at a desk in a library just really doesn't do it. When I meet people, they inspire questions that I never would have asked of my work before I had traveled. Living abroad is an experience that changes your life forever, broadens your mind. Learn to listen, open their eyes, become better interpreters of each other's cultures and each other's values. That has been what the late senator had envisioned for this program. Being an American who was there to work on a project specific to Jamaica really opened a lot of doors. What it created for me was an awareness of how small the planet is and how connected one person can be. In meeting the challenges of this new era of astonishing change, people young and old are finding their voices, calling for justice, opportunity, and global connection through powerful new tools of social media. The idea of person-to-person -person global networking was anticipated three generations ago by a young United States Senator named J. William Fulbright. Sickened by the horrors of modern war, he sought to promote scholarship and promote peace between nations. Thus, the Fulbright program was born. I think living and working with people in another country changes one's attitude toward those people, toward all countries with a different culture. I think it creates a capacity for empathy, for the capacity to understand a different point of view, a different religion. Since its creation in 1946, 310,000 students and scholars, Americans going abroad, and citizens from 155 countries have participated in what is one of the world's premier international education and cultural exchange programs. Fulbright exchanges have expanded opportunity around the world for over six decades. Connections between the U.S. and the Middle East have had lasting significance, with Jordan's Fulbright program serving as a model of intellectual and cultural engagement. We have very few women in Jordan who are uh, archaeologists. At that time when I left, there were only uh, one. It was my first visit to the U.S. I loved it. Everybody who really wants to make a change and to be a leader in his specialty to, to get a Fulbright. Uh, because it teaches you how to do it, teach you how to think, to teach you how to be open to the world and to understand other cultures and to make other cultures understand yours. Promoting dialogue between cultures is at the heart of the Fulbright mission. Persian American student Jasmine Melvin Kushki came to study how traditional Islamic art and emerging contemporary art inform and engage one another. Through this time in Amman, she also found herself. It's always been very natural for me to sort of build bridges between cultures. And so the Fulbright has really allowed me to actually feel more at home than I ever have before in my life. Because it has taken what was the background noise and sort of the unspoken mission of my life and put it you know, front and center. I wanted to apply for an English teaching grant as opposed to a research grant. Across town, Zachary Ruckman's English language class reflected the great diversity of Jordanian society. Bedouins, Palestinians, and refugees from across the region. So I teach at the Jordan Applied University College of Hospitality and Tourism. The students, they're looking for careers in hospitality, tourism, hotel management. They need English professionally. A lot of their career prospects hinge on how good we can get their English to be. While some English language assistants teach at the college level, many are placed in primary and secondary schools. I teach ninth and 10th graders. So I do the you know, basic uh, coursework and whatnot. And then for extracurricular activities, uh, I started a book club. Outside the classroom, Sharif and others volunteer at a sports center 
helping build athletic skills and self-discipline. Yeah, my name is Shadi. Listen to Ana Feather. Definitely the most meaningful part of the fullback experience in general has been my experience in the camp. And I've gotten a very strong feedback from the community here and I've met incredibly interesting people. Every day has been a new adventure. Having a Fulbright has given me the chance to not only have this great experience teaching these students and learning about their lives and their hopes and dreams and what they want to do, but also to get out and just wander the streets and meet people and see a whole range of Jordanian society and many different slices of life here. And the transformative experiences go both ways. Dr. Rana Dajani spent five happy years with her husband and children in Ames, Iowa. She brought home not only a doctorate in microbiology, but also something she learned in the local public library. My children were always at the public library in the States. Now when we came to Jordan, I went around looking for a library so I could take them to it, but there were only a few libraries. As a scientist, I, I made some research and observations. How come children don't read, in, not just in Jordan, but in the Arab world? From one mosque in a quiet neighborhood in East Amman, there are now 80 sites across Jordan, managed by over 400 women and touching the lives of over 4,000 children. <laughs> Uh, the first time the 25 children came, they were dragged by their parents because, you know, parents, when they hear there's an activity, they make their children go to it. But after they experienced the read aloud session, they were dragging their parents to come here every week and they wanted it to be on a more uh, frequent basis. So it was a success. But if you plant the love of reading, it's a gift or a tool or a skill forever. It never stops. So you, you can change the whole world. From her base in Durham, North Carolina, Fulbright alumnus Rachel Weeks continues to weave the connections she started 8,000 miles away. I met Rachel over a very shoddy phone call connection. She said she had gone over to Sri Lanka on a Fulbright scholarship to study living wage. I have long been fascinated by this idea of ethical fashion. A Duke University graduate, Rachel went to Sri Lanka to study the low-wage textile industry. One of the very immediate facts that became clear to me on my Fulbright was that all of the challenges that garment factory workers were facing boiled down to poverty. And I saw no, no better and no more immediate way to improve their lives than to increase wages. To put her values of socially responsible entrepreneurship into practice, Rachel launched a boutique college apparel company, Schoolhouse Incorporated, with a factory in Sri Lanka, a creative director in New York, headquarters in North Carolina, and selling to over 100 college campuses, Rachel has created a virtual globe-spanning company that beautifully expresses the core values of the Fulbright experience. The Fulbright has changed not only the way I think about the world, it made me feel as though I had the ability to be a global citizen. The power of global connectivity also shines through in the Fulbright year spent by Hunter College graduate Alice Arnold. She went from Times Square to Hong Kong to document the impact of astounding new digital sign technology. When I think about these signs, they're part of the wider thought about consumer society in Asia right now. They're building these incredible visual signs with LED technology. And it's definitely part of a movement of cultural capitalism, of these cities who are competing against each other to show they've arrived in the world. For me, the main benefit of the Fulbright, it supports a project work, and that's just great importance. And I'm incredibly grateful having that experience. Lauren might say, that really sounds like a listening activity. Hunter College is a large public urban university. We have about 23,000 students. It's a very diverse uh, student population. It is a majority minority institution. So I applied for a Fulbright and I went to Kingston, Jamaica. I was there from 2009 to 2010, piloting a psychosocial support program for children with HIV and AIDS. A lot of the fear about applying to the Fulbright 
was almost that it, it was hubris, you know? Like, who am I to think that I can get a Fulbright, you know? And so a lot of the times you just close doors for yourself. Um, and luckily I had the encouragement of people to say, look, you know, scholarships are out there, fellowships are out there for people to take them. The lasting effects of my Fulbright on me personally, I had always been passionate about research, but I think it really impressed upon me the need to participate in global health on a wider scale. Poet Mina Alexander brought her wider world to her Fulbright experience and found herself translating between cultures in unexpected ways. I went to India to teach. I had one of the teaching Fulbrights. And so when people would say, well, what kind of campus do you work on? And I would say, well, the college I work on sits on top of a subway station. And I said, well, it's a bit like the crossroads of the world because we have so many immigrant students here. I think this is the very best that the United States of America can do in terms of reaching out to different parts of the world. The access to education and to ideas and to culture, I think people are genuinely curious. It's that curiosity about the world, whether in the arts or languages, politics or the sciences, that leads thousands of students, scholars, and other professionals to explore the world through Fulbright grants. The U.S.-Argentina exchange is among the oldest and strongest. My research is especially related with neurodegenerative disease, especially Parkinson and multiple sclerosis. Dr. Ferrari studied at the School of Medicine at the University of Cincinnati in 1998 and has maintained a productive collaboration with her American colleagues. Fulbright Fellowship helped me so much because it gave me the first step uh, to go abroad, to work in another lab, uh, to know how do you work in another country, that it was totally different from working here. Uh, so it was the first step. They opened a huge door. For me, uh... Dr. Joshua Rosenthal found an exciting and challenging class of students when he came from the National Institutes of Health to the City University of Buenos Aires. Teaching here has actually been very exciting. Very high quality work. They are motivated, hardworking, well-prepared, bright students, 201. But another thing that's quite interesting is they, they move very quickly to the social and political issues in our discussion. And here, it's hard to get away from questions of uh, social equities, where resources are distributed, whether communities have access. Cellist Nestor Tedesco was inspired by his Fulbright experience in the U.S. to bring some of the poorest children in Buenos Aires access to resources. <laughs> but it's about far more than learning classical music. Well, when I returned from my Fulbright experience, I, I started this project that has grown from 30, 40 kids to 1,600. This project is to help kids not to stay in the streets. And we are using music as a tool. And we are using orchestra instruments to get a place like a family, like a society. If we get a kid playing very well, that's good. But that is not the idea. For me, in this project, success, it was like a kid who told us past year, he said, teacher, you save my life because many of my friends are, were killed because they were in drugs. And I'm coming here every Saturday, then I'm not in that business. Art to help transform lives. Art to nourish the soul of a nation. These are some of the ways the Fulbright experience enables people and nations to connect. Here at Memory Park, built to help remember the traumas of Argentine history, Victoria Fortuna reflects on her work. My dissertation looks into the relationship between dance and politics from the 1960s to the present, with specific attention to how dance remembers and represents histories of political violence. The 
Fulbright has really opened doors for me, both in terms of supporting my research in general, allowing me to be here and do the work that I need to do, but also it's really enriched the experience incredibly. Just the time I've spent here, the relationships I've made here, and the connection I feel to this place is something I'll carry through my personal and professional life. Across town at the National Museum of Natural Science, Fulbrighter Daniel Luna operates on a much older timeline, studying the unique dinosaurs found in the high deserts of Argentina and Chile. My dissertation involves looking at fossil mammals that were discovered in the Andes of Chile that span a five million year interval from 20 million to 15 million years ago. My main goal is to identify what these fossils are. The Fulbright lets you work, do your research in a very unencumbered setting. It's a very diverse fellowship available to many types of research, um, people with many interests, and one of its main goals is just to foster connection between two, two different countries. Their presence, the presence of these Americans here and the presence of the Argentines in these places in the States touches an infinite number of lives and has an infinite number of consequences that we are not even aware of. We can connect with each other through the internet, but we still literally need to not only communicate, but understand. Senator Fulbright knew that humanizing international relations was critical for achieving lasting peace and progress. In uh, bringing together people of like minds, people of common interests, people who, uh, who would rather be at peace than at war, and people are searching for opportunities to have peaceful relations. And as a Fulbrighter, that search continues, even when you return to your home country. I did my Fulbright program in Belgium, and I learned so much from the Fulbright Association of Belgium. When I came back to the U.S., I made sure that I wanted to join the Fulbright Association and do the same thing, so to educate those from abroad about the wonderful things in the U.S. And really, you have to understand that once you're a Fulbright, you're always a Fulbright. Born out of the ashes of World War II, Inspired by a remarkable vision of global exchange and dialogue, the Fulbright program offers unique opportunities to connect and change lives, one person at a time. I'm a strong believer of you know, the, the theory of soft power. Experiencing the culture, understanding the people there, and also being a role model and an example of the people from our part of the world. Difficult, but wonderful. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's absolutely incredible. It changed my life in every way, shape, and form.